Hello and welcome everyone, this is Ken from Wiltshire Tutorials. Today's video is about the new cooling kit from ASUS for the Zenith Extreme motherboard. With the new Threadripper 2 CPUs hitting the market, this kit is needed if you are planning on overclocking the Threadripper 2 CPUs with the Zenith Extreme motherboard. Both the 2970WX and the 2990WX have a TDP of 250 watts. That is 70 watts higher than the 1950X, which is the CPU I'm currently running in my computer, which has a TDP of 180 watts. The cooling kit consists of a sock or a system on a chip, heat sink, and a fan with a mounting bracket for VRM cooling to help keep the power delivery cool while you're overclocking the CPU. Now I'm making this video because I haven't seen anybody make a video on how to install the cooling kit. And it just so happens that when you open up the box of the cooling kit, there are no instructions. It's just the picture on the back of the box that you have to go by. So I figured I might as well make a quick video on how to install the cooling kit just for those that are confused on how to do so. The tools that we're gonna need in order to mount the parts from the cooling kit are a six millimeter socket, that is for the nuts and screws that came with the cooling kit. You are also going to need a five millimeter socket as well. I found that I had to remove three motherboard standoffs from my PC case because the nuts that are on the parts that are mounted to the motherboard come in contact with the motherboard standoffs and I wasn't able to install my motherboard properly. And you're also gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver for the screws that are included in the cooling kit. With that said, we're first gonna start off with the SOC or sock heatsink. Don't forget to remove the plastic film that is protecting the bottom of the thermal pads. The placement for the sock heatsink goes in between the first two PCIe X16 slots, as well as up by the dim slots on the right hand side as shown in the video. The sock heatsink is a little bit difficult to install due to the size of the nuts and screws that are included with the sock heatsink. I found it was easier to install the sock heatsink by hanging half of my motherboard over the edge of a table. This allowed me easier access to get the nuts on the screws that were included with the sock heatsink. Next up is the fan for the VRM cooling as well as the metal mounting bracket. Now I wasn't quite sure on how to mount the fan in which orientation with the metal bracket, but judging by the picture on the back of the box, I have it correct in this video here. So make sure you mount the fan correctly or else it'll look off center from the VRM heatsink that's already on the motherboard. The installation steps for the VRM cooling fan are pretty much the same as the sock heatsink. All you need to do is find the motherboard mounting hole that is normally used for mounting the motherboard to your case at the top of the motherboard by the VRM heatsink that is already present on the motherboard and just use the screw and the nut to mount the metal bracket with the fan installed on it to the motherboard. Once the VRM cooling fan is mounted on the motherboard we are now finished installing the Zenith Extreme cooling kit. The only thing that's left is you have to find an open fan header for the additional VRM cooling cooling fan. Unfortunately for me, the CPU fan and the CPU optional fan headers were occupied by my liquid water cooler, so I ended up having to connect the VRM cooling fan to a fan splitter that I already have in my computer. Now, in my opinion, I think the VRM cooling fan kind of looks dumb. It seems like a complete afterthought and I don't think it's going to do much. To be honest, I'm probably better off getting the Asus ROG Ryujin 360mm cooler that was announced by Asus. It has built-in fans on the water block itself, which is actually designed to cool VRMs. I do, however, feel that I will get much better temperature on the sock due to the sock heatsink. I think that is definitely going to be an improvement. However, due to the price of the Zenith cooling kit, I'm not sure if it's worth it just for the sock heatsink, but I hope I'm wrong and I hope the fan actually she does cool the VRMs even at just by a few degrees. That'd be nice. So that wraps up the video on the Zenith Extreme cooling kit. Does this actually work? I have no idea. I'm gonna have to take Asus's word for now. I think I'm gonna get my hands on a thermal camera and test out to see whether or not the VRM and the sock is cooler with this cooling kit or not. But until then, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video. Like and subscribe if you like this video and you wanna see more. As always, my name's Ken, also known as Bullshire, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.